As I said to you guys, we're going to be discussing where were the parents in lieu of the Boy Scouts America, okay? Now, I want to play this video in regards to you guys. And before I do, shouts out to my research team, okay? My research team are on stinking point, okay? So I'm going to, y'all, that's my husband in the background. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to play this video and I want you guys to listen to it. And then we're going to get in the discussion in regards to um, everything, okay? Okay, let me share my screen. Check this out, you guys. Check this out, America, for comment. This is what they said. We are outraged that there have been times when individuals took advantage of our programs to abuse innocent children. We believe victims. We support them. We pay for counseling by a provider of their choice, and we encourage them to come forward. Darrell Jackson is one of the men speaking out about the abuse. He joins us now to discuss his experience. Thank you so much, Darrell, for taking the time to speak with us. I can't imagine uh, the terrible things you've been through, and we really appreciate you being here to share your story. Can you give us a little bit of a sense of what happened and what brings you here now? I really wanted to be with the Boy Scouts. It was something that a lot of people in my neighborhood was in and stuff, and I liked the uniforms. When I got in it, it turned into something else. You know, it was like, it was a rules, you know, basically. So, you know, um, the Boy Scout Master basic, basically manipulated the people there, right? He would let us do things that our parents wouldn't let us do, you know, like, cause we young, you know, you want to drink, you know, oh, wow, I'm getting away with this, you know, he letting me drink, wow, you know, and he portrayed himself as a father figure too. So you put a lot of trust in him and he hung out with the parents of the, of the Boy Scouts. So they had a lot of trust in him too, not knowing what was going on. So basically, when it happened to me, I felt that something was wrong, you know, and I was threatened, threatened my family. So basically, I kind of had to continue what I was doing because I was scared. And finally, I just, you know, my, my heart was like, no, nah, I can't let this keep going because I knew inside something was wrong. And I told my grandma. And at first she didn't believe me. And then, you know, she investigated it and found out that something was wrong with me. She knows her grandson, you know? So that's when she went to the police and found out that this was what happened. And it's like, once I told, it's like I was shunned out to, throughout the neighborhood. The other Boy Scouts shunned me. And I've been, you know, basically it just messed with me all my life. You know, I always had, I grew up fighting, you know, always having to protect myself, trying to prove that I was a man, you know, because of the ridicule. Why are you choosing to speak out about this now? Well, I've been trying to speak out about it. You know, I've been trying to speak out of it ever since, like, in my early 30s. I've been trying to speak out about it. I've been going to psychiatrists all my life, basically. You know, I'm still in under psychiatric care. You know, because of this, and it's done. It this has led to other stuff in my life. You know, me trying to prove that I was a man. You know, and it just it just interrupted my whole life. Everything that I wanted to do because I never felt comfortable with myself. I was scared to touch my son and everything. You know, it it basically led to my marriage being messed up. What would you like to say to the Boy Scouts of America? Wow. But what I really want to say to them, I don't think I could say on um on um camp. What would what change would you like to see from the Boy Scouts of America? Well, I guess they need to really have more rules about people that want to be around kids and really scrutinize and watch them, see what type of 
person this really is, you know? Thank you for bravely sharing your story with mm -hmm. us. Yeah, this is going to be heavy. These, these days are heavy. I wanted to tackle on a few things if you guys didn't hear. If you did, it was a few things. First and foremost, he's been talking out. Second, when he said something about it, he was shunned. Third, he told his parents. Then we go on to hear, well, what do you think should be done? Well, they need to pay more attention to the people that they have in Boy Scout and scrutinize them. Sir, where were your parents? Should they have did better research? Should they dug deeper into the Boy Scout? Weren't you aware of all these many cases, sir? Weren't they aware of all these many cases, sir? Shame on your parents for allowing you to be in Boy Scouts because you like the uniforms. <clears throat> Let me read to you guys um, this in regards to Boy Scouts. take myself off the screen so you guys can see it better. Let me download this PDF while we doing this. <laughs> Gonna save this right here. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay. Yeah, shout out to my uh, research team. Okay. We're going to read that later, but let me go ahead and get into what I was um, wanting to get into regards to this, okay? Boy Scouts of America sex abuse cases. The Boy Scouts of America, BSA, is one of the greatest, one of the largest youth organization in the United States with 2.3 million young members and approximately 889,000 adult volunteers. In 1979, there were over 5 million youths in BSA, over 92,000 sexually abused. Sexual abuse claims were found. Oh, 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 oh. Rewind. Over 92,000 sexual abuse claims were filed. With the bankruptcy court before November 16th of 2020, there were nearly 2,000 reported to there were nearly 2,000 reported cases of abuse within the Boy Scouts of America prior, prior to 1994. And at least one abuse incident as recent as 2006, the high risk of volunteer youth organization has been recognized. And in 1988, the BSA created a sex abuse education and prevention program called the Youth protection program to help address the problem. Now in 2010, a jury ordered that the scouts pay 18.5 million to a scout who was abused in 1980s. It was the largest penumptive damages awarded 
to a single, single plaintiff in a child abuse case in the United States. Now, on February 18, 2020, the Boy Scouts of America filed for a Chapter 11 financial re reconstructioning, a reconstructing to offer equitable compensation to survivors and their families. Uh-oh. And their families? Why? Aren't they the reason why these boys are in these predicaments? Why do they get money? The BSA cited approximately 200 lawsuits pending in state and federal district courts across the United States and 1,700, 1,700 potential claimants in total. In May of that same year, the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the District of Delaware set November 16, 2020 at 5 p.m., Eastern Standard Time as the bar date for all survivors of sexual abuse, 82,000 sexual abuse claims were filed with the bankruptcy um, court before the November 16th deadline to receive claims. Normally in bankruptcy, the organization would at this point face liquidation, but the Boy Scouts of America National Council, along with the local councils, council camps and chapter and uh, charter organizations over the years carried various policies of general liability insurance with no annual aggregate amount leading to believe that each survivor will have their individual claims liquidated through insurance settlements in full How come so many cases? All these bad parents. I, I tell you, like, did you not hear about all of these cases before putting your child into it? And then, I mean, if you still heard about these individuals, this this organization, you still signed your son up? It's your fault, parent. Shame on you for thinking you could trust the organization. Where were the parents? These little boys wanted it. That grown man that we witnessed on the screen, he wanted it. He said he liked the uniforms. All those tears on camera, he was faking. Said he didn't want to touch his son after that. He was scared. No, he wasn't. All for TV. He kept going to all the meetings. If it was an issue, why keep going to the council meetings? I want you guys to take a look at this as well. Sorry, Let me pull this up for you guys here. Let's check this one out, okay? And trigger warning, okay? I do apologize. I do not want to trigger anyone with this circumstance in this situation. 
little settlement between the Boy Scouts of America and tens of thousands of sexual abuse survivors is one of the largest in U.S. history. The National Organization of Boy Scouts filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the winter of 2020. And as John Yang tells us, there are now concerns about how much survivors will receive. Judy, the proposal is a first step in settling the more than 80,000 claims against the Boy Scouts for decades of sexual abuse. And lawyers who negotiated the deal on behalf of survivors of the abuse say there could be a lot more money to come. In a statement, the Boy Scouts of America called it a significant step toward a global resolution of those claims. The deal must still be approved by a bankruptcy judge and other attorneys representing survivors said they'll object to it as too small. Attorney Kenneth Rothweiler represents about 16,000 of those claimants and negotiated the settlement. Mr. Rothweiler, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks when for we, having me. Have you talked to any of the survivors that you've been re uh, you represent and what's their reaction to what they're hearing about this? Yeah, I talk to survivors every day, and I always get their opinion as to uh, you know how they're feeling and and how the how they perceive the whole bankruptcy going. I mean, you know, I wouldn't say they're you know they're over. Hi, I want to pause this. Okay, um, um, let me come let me come close up on the screen. Okay, so I know we spoke about Asriel early, and some people are getting the feedback, uh, a playback in regards to it. Now we're on where were the parents in regards to the Boy Scouts, okay? Um, Joycelyn, you guys, make sure you're praying for her, okay? She still is in the grasp of the whole enterprise, okay? Unfortunately, all right? So we don't know what's going on with her, okay? Um, of course, as we've heard and read, uh, she has been disconnected from the world, you know? So uh, we do know that she is still involved and still in the grasp of R. Kelly and his enterprise. So we don't know. And then furthermore, with her being grown, she can come out and we never know because she's grown um, and, you know, and try to function on her own. We don't know. She's a grown woman, so she doesn't have to go back to her family. But as of now, I haven't heard anything. She's still in the enterprise. So make sure you guys put your prayers out for her, okay? For Joy, but they feel satisfied because the Boy Scouts have acknowledged what they've done. And now they've come to the table and, you know, compensation is coming uh, to the survivors. I wanted y'all to hear that because, did you hear that? <laughs> The Boy Scouts acknowledge their wrongdoing. See, it has to come a point to where you acknowledge what you are doing to be wrong. Let me take you guys to a article now. Let me let you guys hear this uh, particular story. In 1997, while at a Boy Scout camp in Idaho, and hold, hold on, camp, meaning a parent has to consent for their child to go into this camp. How do I know? Because I was in Girl Scouts. Yeah, my mom had to consent to me. Uh-oh, hold on, y'all. My camera stopped. One second. One second, you guys. <clears throat> I know because I was in Girl Scouts, right? And so you had to have a waiver. There it go. You had to have a waiver in order to go to the camp. OK, so. Shame on the parent, right? 
before we even get into this article because y'all said when y'all heard the clarities sign a consent they were selling their daughter off they consented to it right so let's see what this parent consent consented for her son okay let's just see shame on this parent In 1997, while at a Boy Scout camp in Idaho, Steed was sexually abused by a scout leader and Latter-day Saints member named Brad Stoll. The Boy Scouts have historically been closely connected to the Church of Latter-day Saints, often known as the Mormon Church. When Steed sought to report the abuse, leadership at the camp failed to act so then so the then 14 year old boy took it on himself to call the police who descended on the camp and arrested storm my point in sorry y'all my feedback my point in pulling that particular part out if you notice here, when the baby reported it to the enterprise and to the circle, leadership at the camp failed to act. Did nobody call no parents and say, ma'am, one of our camp leaders sexually harassed your child sexually harass your son come get him at this moment we're going to be fellow reporting getting him gone so where were the parents consenting a parent consenting parents none the wiser let's continue that should be the end of the story he told me when I interviewed him where the good guys come in and fix it but unfortunately that was just the beginning Steve was stunned was shunned by people in his community and targeted by people in his school and church well would you look at that this is why there's silence when it comes to matters like this. This baby was shunned because he did what was right. Kind of reminds me of the victims involved with this whole R. Kelly situation. Cars being blown up, death threats, vibrary, all the hate online, golden. Baby, so Sorry, y'all. I'm going to continue, though. Mm -mm -mm. Worse, stall who confessed to molesting 24 boys and pleaded guilty to molesting two was initially given a 150-day jail sentence. Do we rally against the victims or the victimizers? I say the latter. This dude confessed. This ain't no alleged. He confessed to molesting 24 boys and pleading guilty to molesting two. 
and they practically gave him a slap on the wrist of 150 day jail sentence roughly one week for every boy he will be one week of jail for every boy he abused compounding things the filings for a civil case relating to Stowell were erased from the public access court docket. And see, sounds familiar. See, when R. Kelly paid, what, Tiffany up under the table and it, it, it wiped it off the books. And then everybody was, didn't they know better to send their daughters and sons off with this man? Didn't they know better? No, because stuff like this, they weren't privy to. Meaning that people could not get a full view into the events. The full story would only come to light because of the work of Zuckerman, a reporter with the Idaho Falls Post Register. Acting on a tip, the paper sued for access to the court file and then published the story of Stowell and the Idaho camp in a series of investigative articles called Scouts Honor. Wow. The community of I Idaho Falls was rattled, but some people saw the stories as an attack on cherished institute as a attack on this beloved singer r kelly this is an attack these are lies this is not true these little nasty little fast little hot tail boys wanted it their parents consented to it right I want to show you guys another clip. All right, y'all, it's a commercial. Let me go on and get it pulled up, though. What the Boy Scouts set up was the perfect cover for someone who did want to take advantage of a child. Grown men are with young boys in a tent alone in the woods is a recipe for disaster. It's just devastating. It really makes you... Wait, what? What was that? Grown men in a tent with little boys? Did they parent consent to that? Shame on those parents. Where were the parents? Why would they send their kids off to camps being in tents with grown men? question not believe not trust so anyone who unfortunately was sexually abused as a child in boy scouts now has less than a week to file a claim against them in court time is of the essence nicole kreitz has been working this story since before the organization officially filed for bankruptcy that chapter 11 filing forced the courts to set a deadline for any further claims as they consolidate assets and the number of survivors coming forward is already far outpacing anything we've seen with the Catholic Church sex crimes cases. I've tried to erase it. But... Did you hear that? This. 
was bigger than the Catholic Church scandal. Right up under our eyes. The Boy Scouts? Bigger than the Catholic Church? And y'all know the Catholic Church was getting down. But the Boy Scouts? A consensual situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The parents, we filled out documents. Yeah, yeah, they did. A whole little three, four page. And then when you went to camp, you definitely signed off the emergency, just in case of an emergency. They knew what they were supposed to be getting into. They shouldn't have known better. Find me, you know, best I can. Michael Clifton knows now there were a lot of red flags he missed growing up. That's him with his back turned. He saved some mementos from Boy Scouts and wishes he could erase his encounters with troop leader Craig Cowan. I would see him going to bed and uh, saying, well, come here, you know, and he'd grab somebody, pull them in there and, you know, like they needed to be there. At 14, Michael was the oldest in his troop and feels guilty he didn't know better to protect the younger boys on camping trips. He said that he, he slept naked because it was the only way he, you should do it, stay warm, you stay warmer. That's what he told us, but he would do it every time, every outing. I didn't even know that was inappropriate. Michael and five other boys later helped Cowan move from Redlands, California to Bullhead City, Arizona. And that's when it all happened. He says Cowan gave them alcohol before bedtime. Wait, what? Why would the parents allow their children to help this grown man go move? Now, why would they do that? Did they not know that their little boys were getting touched at these camps? And then you're going to send them off to go help this man move? These parents were the worst. Shame on these parents. This was a setup. They set this camp leader up. They set him up. <laughs> Darn parents. I wake up to someone crossed beside the bed, crawled up under his knees, reaching up under the covers with his hand in my privates. He says the same thing happened to his younger brother and the other boys. Then all of a sudden, boom, the dark side of it comes out and it's just like, wow, devastating. Boy Scouts created this trusting environment. It was really um, apple pie and good for everybody. That was an open door for individuals who would use that trust to take advantage of kids. Marcy Hamilton and her team with the nonprofit group Child USA reviewed thousands of cases of sex abuse and scouting and found more than 71% of the victims were abused multiple times and almost two thirds of the accused abusers stayed in scouting after being reported to Boy Scouts. Wait, what? They stayed? They wanted it. More than a third stayed even after reporting it? Disgusting. They wanted it. Where were the parents? Why would they allow them to go back? Shame on the parents. They went, they stayed. Even after reporting, they stayed. They wanted it. They they wanted it. They wanted it. They got their cookies. They got to go on their campings. They wanted it. They stayed. Even after reporting it, they stayed. Shame on them.
it's just wrong uh, all the way around. Um, it's terrible. Michael says they confronted Cowan, got out of there, and when they went home, figured that was the end of it. I didn't even dream he would have another troop. There was not a lot of parenting going on in my household. Scott Powell was 11 when he joined Craig Cowan's Boy Scout troop in Bullhead City. Yeah, he came up as a father figure. He had a, a Pong game. I think he had the first microwave oven in Bullhead City. So he was kind of this cool guy that took an interest in all aspects of my life. Scott says Cowan was a physician's assistant and gave all the boys physicals before summer camp. So he said, okay, I need to, I need to do the hernia exam again. Then from there, he started to manually manipulate me. And I got a little freaked out. He said, you know, it, it's built up in there. We got to get it out or it's going to eventually affect your ability to have kids in the future. He says Cowan was persistent with the ruse and did the same thing four, sometimes six times a week for four years. Back then, school counselors, nobody ever talked to kids about what's appropriate and what's not. At one point, he and his mom moved in with Cowan, relocating to Henderson, Nevada. Then she moved out and got married, leaving Scott behind. I didn't know anything about foster homes. I didn't know anything about. I'm, I am so speechless. Did y'all hear that? The mother. Moved in with this camp leader, which like, 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 I'm just. Hold on. I need I need to articulate what I'm going to say. Because I know everybody's like, what the hell? OK, look, look, look. Check this out. She didn't know. But you see the stupid moves as a parent that we can make because we're not pre privy to stuff going on with our child. This woman moved her children in with the abuser. Cause unbeknownst to her, she didn't know her son was getting abused by the man. Now, I, I just, I just don't want to believe. Normally, she did that. Okay. I just pray to God not. But this is why I'm telling you, and I hope you guys are comprehending. It's stupid to keep asking where were the parents in situations because nine times out of ten. 10 times out of 10, they didn't know. I hope not. I hope, I, I hope she didn't know. I hope she didn't know. Where I might end up living, if not there. Time doesn't heal. You know, 50 years later, it doesn't matter. The pain's still there. Attorney Ken Rothweiler is with the Abused and Scouting Coalition, representing up to 50,000 survivors. Like the Catholic Church, the Boy Scouts knew about these pedophiles going back years. BSA declined our request for an interview, saying the Child USA study is biased because it's funded by abused and scouting firms. They released a statement saying, we care deeply about all victims and sincerely apologize to anyone harmed during their time in scouting. 
We are outraged. There have been times when individuals took advantage of our programs to abuse innocent children. Nobody knew more about the risk to your child than the Boy Scouts. And they weren't telling the parents and they weren't keeping um, the next child safe. Wait, what? What, what, what was that, Gikaris? The Boy Scouts were not telling the parents. We're not keeping the parents informed to save the next child. Oh. Wait a minute. Don't you mean the parents were not informing other people to keep other kids informed? What's in the adults? The responsibility wasn't in the parents. It was in the adults. safe. And so that's recklessness. That's not just negligence. The Boy Scouts confidential perversion files go back more than 100 years. Shortly after forming in 1910, BSA started tracking convicted pedophiles and allegations of abuse in their ranks. They finally adopted a too deep rule in 1987, requiring two adults at all activities, but didn't start running background checks for another seven years and waited until 2010 to adopt a policy for mandatory reporting to law enforcement. I didn't see him on the news. Scott says he tried to report his abuse years later when he saw Cowan being arraigned for felony child porn charges in 1996. Cowan was convicted, but not for anything he did in scouting. He died in 2009. The only way that I could see justice happening is to undo what was done. Anything short of that is not justice, it's just punishment. Scott says no settlement can make up for what Cowan stole from him. My whole junior high and high school experience. Did y'all hear that? I just want to get that to, through everybody's thick skull. No titties, no fake booty, no money, no $10,000 allowances, no shopping spree. It's going to take away from what these men, women, Girls, boys went through. This is the reason why I created Where Are the Parents Wednesdays because you guys are not comprehending it. I'm showing you a total situation. Let me get plugged back in, baby, because all this jumping and skipping and hopping is not becoming. I'm showing you guys stuff that's been hiding in plain eyesight. This has been going on since they started the daggone Boy Scouts. It's been going on since they started. So shame on these parents. They should have did their due diligence to look up the Boy Scouts to see if they had any sexual predators, right? No, because who is thinking by sending their child off for an opportunity like Boy Scouts that they got to be concerned? Who would thought that the pee pie piper would put his nasty pee 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 in these girls and these boys and these women and these men and also beat them, uh, molest them, solemnize them and do all of what they did? You really think? A parent is going to sign on a dotted line for their child to get beat, abused, molested, sodomized, raped. You got to be oblivious.
I was in Girl Scouts. Sure was. I, well, I sure was. I went to the camp. I shared my story with everybody about me peeping on myself. And and um, I, I, I ran off and they were trying to get me together or whatever. I didn't have no bad experiences. Well, nobody trying to mess with me. But my mom signed a consent for me to go. And I lied to her about me peeing on myself and put it on one of the scout leaders. We lie as children. We lie as adults. Experience. Yeah, that's really tough. That's that's real tough. I mean, that, that really bothers me. Michael is still deeply disturbed how widespread the abuse was across the organization. I wish I would have known to, you know, I'd been more vocal about, you know, screaming something you know to somebody where i live now there's a big bsa um camp over here but every time i see it i go by it you know it's like the hair on the back of my neck i'm like god i hope them boy the kids are okay bsa says their chapter 11 filing will help them restructure to carry out its mission for years to come i've lived with it for a lot of years it's just devastating like scott michael's ready for it to all be over so he can put this behind him for good and hopes others will come forward to find healing as well. I hope that it helps. Child USA is also working with survivors. Child. Child. Okay. Anyways, y'all. Mm-mm-mm. Let me uh, let y'all hear this last video, and then we're going to wrap this up, you guys. This is so sad. The Boy Scouts are an organization that was created by an act of Congress. They have a level of authority, a level of, of command that reaches the, the top. They're responsible. They're the ones who put these predators in, in positions of authority, in positions of trust. And the Boy Scouts and the parents who trusted their children to this institution were let down. We started this investigation of abuse in scouting about the time that the Boy Scouts announced that they were going to think about declaring for bankruptcy. We realized that there were a number of people around the country who had never come forward. And uh, we reached out in, in a, a campaign to try and uh, let these people know that it was okay to come forward. And if they didn't do it now, they might lose their rights forever. Countless innocent children were sexually molested by adult scout leaders. We are attorneys representing survivors of scout leader sexual abuse. If you were abused in a scouting program, you are not alone. Come forward and get the help and healing you deserve. Boy Scouts have known about this abuse for decades and even more than a century because the Boy Scouts started in the early 1900s. It takes someone at the top to, to indicate that, that this is something we're going to keep close to the vest. We're not going to go to the authorities because if, if we allow it to, to get out there, we're going to lose members, we're going to lose scouts, we're going to lose money. And and the boys. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Mm. 
We can't let this get to the authorities because we're going to lose scouts. We're going to lose members. We're going to lose money. Y'all crying out the parents. And y'all are crying out the parents. When this a whole, uh, oh no. When this a whole octopus right here, bigger than R. Kelly, with these scout leaders involved, and you guys are yelling out, "Where are the parents?" And this man says. We can't lose members. We can't lose scouts. We're going to lose money. It's all about the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These scouts have kept files on those who have been reported called the perversion files, which is sort of a sick name, and they've kept them secret. Hold on one second. Sherlock, homegirl, hello. But no offense, I think you're missing it, okay? You can tie your children to your hip. Eventually, they're going to grow up. A lot of these cases when it came to R. Kelly were not kids. They were grown. And sometimes our children have to experience life for situations like this that they're properly equipped for. You're not going to be able to keep your children strapped in a house for the rest of their lives. So it's up to you as the parent while you can to instill as much of, of knowledge and, and everything in them as you can but even then, they still can fall subject and prey to circumstances. I did. My mom didn't play. I still lied to her. I still became 16 and pregnant. My choice, not hers. My mom wasn't at that, that dude's house. I was. Those boys that went to Boy Scouts, their parents weren't there. Those grown men that were messing with them were. So, you know. Okay, let me, let me get back to this. Now we have more individuals that, that have been identified by the people who have contacted us, more people than were actually in the perversion files. There were, there were about 7,000 files kept by the Boy Scouts. We know from experience that one abuser doesn't just abuse one child. A pedophile usually abuses multiple people. We have youngsters that are minors that are that are eight, nine, ten years old, and we have uh, elderly people who are in their seventies, eighties, and we even had some people in their nineties who, for the first time, have acknowledged that this happened to them when they were when they were in scouting. There's been a movement throughout the country to open up the statute of limitations for sexual abuse victims. And the legislation that has passed in New York, New Jersey, and is pending in California and Montana, all of those uh, states are now 
allowing victims to come forward regardless of when their abuse occurred and present claims to whomever uh, was the abuser or the institution that housed these abusers and that did not do anything that they should have done to expose these abusers. The Boy Scouts generally say they're sorry, but you know, sorry doesn't do anything. Part of this project of, of reaching out to Boy Scouts who have been abused is to prevent it from happening again. Whether it will be the end of the Boy Scouts, we don't know, but they will have to answer for all of these victims. And if that means that they will go out of business and that there will no longer be a place where pedophiles can find a home and find victims, then I think many of the victims will be happy about that. Wow. So, um, yeah, you guys, like, wow. Whew. Sad. <laughs> sad, 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 um, sad. Sad. I had a few more articles, but I didn't want this to drag on to be longer than um, what it should. I just want to turn to you guys and get into these comments and see what you guys think about everything. Look. Look. Like I said, I come to you guys every Wednesday. I'm going to come to you guys every Wednesday with these stories because I just want to bring things into perspective. Now, look, say, hey. If you a perfect parent, man, you, you, you're the real MVP, but I don't know a perfect parent out there because if you're perfect, then you're, you're better than God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See his children, Adam and Eve. Yeah. They defied him in, in, in the, in the garden of Eden and this garden was beautiful. Had everything they needed. But see, this, this serpent came in. Not wiggling on the ground. Because, I mean, who would? But walking straight up. Probably looked familiar. Probably said everything he had to say. Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's called separation. He saw the weaker vessel. No shade, women. We are that when it comes to our mate. And I'm okay with that. You, you can be strong by yourself. <laughs> Pulled the weakness from the two out. It caused her to be used to weaken the strength oh it worked then all hell literally broke loose those were god's children shame on god didn't he know the devil was roman I guess he didn't equip his kids good enough. I guess he was a bad parent, bad parent choice. He took his eye off of them too long and allowed that serpent to come in. Shame on him. So by all means, if you better than God, you could have taught him a thing of two. So do I sit here and say that every parent did phenomenal with decision making when it comes to certain things that they possibly did in lieu of R. Kelly or any situation? No. But I do stand on the simple fact in the matter that no parent is perfect. You do know that, right? You ain't perfect. 
I guarantee you I can find some bad areas in your child that I will turn my nose up to. That <laughs> your family already turning their nose up to, child. So how dare you raise your nose up to another parent when your stuff don't smell like roses, boo-boo? Yeah, no. Nah. We witnessed over 82,000 cases. Bigger. Grander. Than the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church. The Boy Scouts had greater numbers than the Catholic Church. With documents, consents from parents. Who we also can hear countless of times in articles and videos they never told the parents. They never told the authorities. One we heard, the child told the police. Because the camp leaders, they were not. The camp leaders knew what was going on and said nothing to the parents. How, as a parent, can I do something if I don't know? If my child falls outside and scrapes her knee and then just runs around the neighborhood with a bloody knee and you're like, ugh, why she got her child running around her? I didn't know. If I knew, I would have cleaned it up and put a Band-Aid on it and I probably wouldn't allow her to go back outside. But when we sit and we hear countless of these stories, Boy Scouts, and people can still sit back and say, well, shame on those parents because they should have been around their kids. Okay. Good luck with that. I can't do it. Mama got to work. And if you did, you could. <laughs> Look man say teach me how you do it teach me your ways because even the president the love of y'all life barack obama had to work and his kids were not in the white house in the Oval office sitting there on the benches watching him work and i do recall <laughs> the older one had a blunt in her mouth, did, did she not? Shame on Obama. That dag Michelle, they're wretched, horrible parents. And then the little one was dressed like a hoochie. Just horrible parenting. At the end of the day, if we continue the same energy that we're experiencing, you will never know that your child has been touched. You will never hear the story until they are trying to off themselves because of the trauma that they're enduring or because they're on their deathbed and they decide to confess it, okay? We heard how they didn't say anything until they were 90 years old. 90. They kept that secret until they were 90 years old. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Yo.
don't get it. 